Did you see the countdown? Oh, oh, sorry. I was still waiting for that. Sorry, everyone. Uh, so welcome to our presentation today. Uh, my name is Wei Fan, and joining me today is my colleague, Cranian. You'll see her on the screen as well. Uh, Cranian will be answering your questions throughout our presentation today, while I uh, deliver most of the information about our undergrad programs and, and missions. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll get started. So we're both from the University of Saskatchewan. And as you can see here, uh, this is a beautiful picture of our campus, uh, aerial picture. Um, before we do any of our presentation, we always do a land acknowledgement just because our main campus is situated on Treaty 6 territory and the homeland of the Métis. We pay our respects to the First Nations and Métis ancestors of this place and reaffirm our, uh, our relationship with one another. So for those of you who have never been to Canada or never been to, at least never been to our province, uh, we are located in the province called Saskatchewan. Um, as you can see on the screen here, it's, it was in that yellow square. That's where Saskatchewan is. Uh, it is about like a two hour flight to Vancouver and then about a three hour flight to Toronto. So we're really in the middle of Canada. Um, many people say we're hard to pronounce, but easy to draw. Saskatchewan is a beautiful province um, with a variety of different landscapes. So you will see, although we're known as the prairies of uh, Canada, but we actually have um, two national parks in our province. So you'll see many lakes, trees, um, mountains up north there. Uh, and then at the bottom right there, you can also tell that you can definitely see the northern lights here in Saskatchewan. Um, a couple of more benefits for all the international students coming to Saskatchewan is that uh, we're known for our uh, fully covered healthcare. So if you become a student in Saskatchewan with your health, uh, with your study permit, all you can apply for a Saskatchewan health card. So all your uh, basic health coverage are uh, covered through our health uh, provincial plan, and you don't have to pay extra for that. Uh, another benefit is that we're known for our provincial nominee program. So uh, a better um, an easy uh, way to help you become a permanent residency, a uh, permanent resident of Canada, if that's what you want. Uh, another great thing will be uh, our graduate retention program. So if you do decide to stay after you graduate and then find a job in Saskatchewan, our government will actually pay you back for in a tax credit uh, way to pay back your uh, tuition. Uh, so lots of great benefits to study in our province. And as I said, our, our main campus uh, of the University of Saskatchewan is located in the largest city in Saskatchewan, and it, it is called Saskatoon. Um, we are known for many things here in Saskatoon. The best thing was probably, the most famous thing probably are Saskatoon berries, um, which are very delicious and very healthy. Um, but also we're known for being the largest city in the province. Uh, it, it is definitely a cultural and uh, economic center for sure. Um, but although it's the largest city in the province, it's not uh, a huge, heavy populated city comparing to uh, some large centers like Toronto and Vancouver. Um, we are about a mid to smaller size city in Canada. And then the benefits of that is like, you can go anywhere in our city within 15 minutes. So very, very convenient. And uh, the living cost here is not high. It's actually very affordable. Uh, so great place for you to study. And then if you decide to settle a family here, great place. Um, so our main campus, uh, as I said, is in Saskatoon. Here are some pictures to show you uh, how beautiful our campus looked like. We are in a university that established in 1907. So we have over 100 years of history. As you can clearly tell from the pictures here, we have some really beautiful old architecture and then lots of green space for our students to study, to hang out, to relax, uh, to really enjoy um, the environment here. Uh, as far as our student body, we, although being um, a mid-sized city or a smaller size city, our student body in our university is actually not too small. We are enrollment just exceeded 26,000. 
Uh, and then among that 26,000 students, there are 3,300 uh, students from uh, international background, and then they actually came from over 134 countries. So if you do decide to come to USASC, um, there's a high chance you'll meet someone that comes from the same background and then share the same journey as you. So you'll never feel lonely. Um, another thing about our university is that we're a proud member of the U15, which is a group of top Canadian research universities. Uh, this place as, a, as one of the top research intensive medical doctoral university in Canada. And we actually ranked top seven in the following areas of studies in Canada, especially our studies on water resource, we ranked, which we ranked number one in Canada. We're the best institution to study that uh, in Canada. And then part of the benefits of being a medical doctoral research intensive university is that we give our undergrad students uh, lots of hands-on uh, research experience and then co-op internship ex experiences throughout your study. And this, these kind of experience can start as early as your first year. In fact, one in two of our undergrad students uh, get to experience some sort of uh, hands-on research experience in their first year. So something very exciting for all of you um, because we, we all learn by doing, right? Um, and then when you apply to the University of Saskatchewan, uh, we offer um, over 160 different programs and study areas in our undergraduate level. Um, and these study areas and programs are divided into different colleges. Uh, we like to use the term colleges, but you might find other institutions use the word faculty or school. Uh, it's all interchangeable. We just use the word college. Yeah, so when you apply to our undergraduate programs, you will be applying to a specific college uh, for that program. And then we have 13 colleges here uh, at USASC, and they're divided into two categories, as you can see on the slides here. So first, we have the non-direct entry colleges. As you can see, most of them are uh, what we know as professional colleges. Uh, for example, if you want to become a doctor, a nurse, a dentist. Um, unfortunately, these colleges being non-direct non entry means that you cannot uh, go there directly from high school. Uh, all of them require you to have some sort of uh, post-secondary education, uh, some undergrad studies before you can apply. And the years varies depends on the pr program. Um, as you can see here, medicine and veterinary medicine are grayed out because those two colleges currently do not take any international student. You have to be a Canadian citizen or a permanent resident to be able to apply to those two colleges. But today we'll talk a little bit more about our direct entry colleges. Uh, these six colleges are um, the programs that you can apply directly out of high school. So we're just going to go in alphabetical order to talk a little bit more about each college. First, we have our College of Agriculture and Bioresources. Um, many people think um, this is just a college to learn about farming, about uh, crops, uh, but it's they. we actually offer a lot more. And then in fact, uh, being the prairies, uh, being the uh, Saskatchewan known as the food basket, the bread basket of Canada, um, we play a huge role in our agriculture business. Um, and a great contribution to our uh, Canadian economy. So if you do decide to come to study in our agriculture and bioresource college, um, there's a lot more than just agricultural uh, crops, animals that you can learn. You can also learn things like soil, um, environment science, how to protect our um, environment. And then something like um, if you're into business, you can learn agribusiness or even uh, food industry management things like that. So many, many variety options. If you're interested in that, you can definitely come to our booth. We have a brochure of the um, college, and then you can definitely click on that and then view the detailed programs they offer. Next, we have our largest college on campus. It is the College of Arts and Science. And then Cranian here today, she's also a representative for, from our College of Arts and Science. So if you do end up having any questions about this college, definitely reach out to her at our booth uh, or right now. Um, she can answer most of your questions for sure. So arts and science, as I said, is our biggest college on campus. Uh, and we're known for um, few, universe, few of the university in Canada actually combine the College of Arts and the College of Science. The reason we do that is we, uh, we wanted to offer a variety of programs for our students to really explore what you want to do. Because, you know, sometimes we, 
when you just graduated from high school, you might have not decided what you want to study, or you just have too many interests. You want to uh, try everything and then then figure out this is something I want to do. So if that's your case, arts and science is definitely the gr um, great place for you. And also remember all these uh, non-direct entry colleges that we mentioned that you cannot go directly. You have to take some undergrad studies. Well, lots of students actually choose our College of Arts and Science as a pathway to those professional colleges, just because our Arts and Science College offers so many different programs. So you can make sure that you cover all the classes you need uh, to go into those professional colleges within the College of Arts and Science. And uh, next, we have our College of Education. Uh, speaks for itself, the name speaks for itself. Uh, it is a college for those of you who want to become educators, whether you whether it is a, education, uh, a teacher for elementary school kids or all the way for teachers um, for adults. Let's say if you are into trades and you want to teach in a vocational school, you can definitely come to our College of Education and earn that certificate to eventually become a teacher for a vocational school as well. So many, many great options for teachers. Um, but for those of you who have a business mind and really into money, I know I'm at, I am definitely, we have our Edwards School of Business. Uh, today, we also have a rep. Her name's Alexandra. Um, you can also talk to her. She's our rep from the Edwards School of Business. Uh, so make sure if you have any question about their program, make sure to talk to Alex at our booth. So our Edwards School is actually a credit program, uh, which places us among the top 5% business schools in the entire world, not just in Canada, in the entire world, we're among the top 5%. Definitely, definitely a good uh, business program for you to go into. Um, there are different majors, uh, actually, in fact, six different majors that you, uh, you can choose after your first, uh, after your the second, uh, first term of your Or you want to go to accounting, finance, uh, all different kinds of choices. Plus, the uh, the Edwards School of Business also offer lots of co-op internship programs um, for students in their upper years. If you wanted to know more about that, definitely contact Alex at our booth. And then for those of you who are into science and physics, of course, engineering is a good place for you. Uh, we do offer a comprehensive engineering program at our university. Um, same thing, similar to the College of, uh, sim similar to our Edwards School of Business, you'll have a chance to choose uh, the major you want to focus on among eight different majors uh, after your first year. So there, are, so things like civil engineering, mechanical engineering, all the way to engineering physics, uh, computer engineering, environmental engineering. We offer all different kinds of engineering program in our en College of Engineering. And something very excited we did is that we completely changed our first year engineering program. And uh, one of the biggest changes that we completely removed our uh, your finals for the first year. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I just heard Karimian said, I need to share my screen, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'll do that in a second. There we go, okay. Everybody can see, okay. so. Um, yeah, so one thing very exciting about our engineering college is that we completely change our first year engineering program. Um, the biggest sign, the first sign you can see there is we completely remove your finals uh, because not because we think exam is not important, just but we think one exam to decide whether you learn the knowledge you should learn is not fair. So we instead students are giving multiple chances to and different ways to uh, a proof that they have learned the knowledge they uh, need. And then uh, that that also gives you chances to try again. And then your classes will be shorter. So instead of having that them run all term long, uh, they're actually shorter as, uh, can be as short as one month long, um, which helps you to really focus and concentrate uh, in that one uh, subject and then be able to apply directly the knowledge you learned from the subject to the next class you'll take. Uh, so really, really good uh, design program, and it's one of a kind in Canada. Uh, if you're into engineering, definitely give it a try. Um, we also have some brochures in our um, booth uh, for you to uh, explore what we offer at the College of Engineering. 
Last but not least, we have the College of Kinesiology uh, as our last direct entry colleges. Um, kinesiology, uh, many people have the myth that oh, you have to be really into sports to go into kinesiology, which is not true because kinesiology itself, itself is the study of the, uh, our human body movement. So as long as you're into that, um, kinesiology is the right place for you. And in fact, kinesiology is one of our most competitive colleges in USAS uh, because they only offer over uh, 100 seats every year. Uh, so the admission average can go really high. And we will talk about that later on uh, when we talk about admission requirements. Yeah, so but there are lots of um, career opportunities with a uh, kinesiology degree. For example, you can become a, definitely become a coach or if you want to teach um, uh, physical education in the school, you can also do the kinesiology and education combined degree uh, to eventually become a phys ed teacher in school. Uh, other things like you can be a sports team manager, uh, if that's something you're into, or you can even become a healthcare professional to help people with uh, things like a physical physiotherapist, a uh, registered um, physiotherapist, if, you, if that's something you want to go into. Kinesiology is also pop, a popular pathway colleges for those of uh, you who want to get into med, uh, things like medicine uh, or nursing, also a popular choice as well. So since we were talk, we quickly went through all, all of our um, direct entry undergrad programs. Uh, let's talk about what's our admission requirements. So if you're applying to our undergrad program, there are four things we look from you. First, we would like you to graduate from your high school. And then secondly, we calculate your admission average. Uh, the third thing is we will check your um, high school transcript to see, uh, depends on the program you apply, to see if there are required classes for your program and if you have taken those classes in your high school. The last but not least thing is that if your first language is not English, which uh, for many international students like myself, um, we will require you to provide an English language proficiency proof and that can be your standardized test like OWLS or to TOEFL. Um, but we also have our own language um, center at the university, uh, which you which offers a full full time uh, English for academic purpose program. Uh, if you do not want to take those standardized tests, you can definitely register for our uh, English for academic purpose program, and that will also qualify you as a language proficiency proof. Yeah, so here's an example of how we uh, calculate your admission average. The key point is that we do not look at your full transcript. So in fact, we actually pick five out of five out of your best performing classes to calculate your average. So you don't need to worry if you mess up with one course in your grade twelve. Um, we can use another one that's that has a better score. And then speaking of admission types, uh, we're, there are two types of admission we offer at USAS. So first of all, for most colleges, we do the rolling admission, which means it's a first come first serve basis until all the seats are filled. Uh, but for some other colleges uh, like education and kinesiology, because they're so competitive, uh, they actually use a competitive ranking based admission, which means all applications are received at the same time, uh, the deadline when, when the deadline reaches, we rank all our applicants um, by your average and by other things. Uh, and we determine based on the number of seats we offer that year and we cut the line and then say uh, only the maybe the top 100 students will get admitted. Uh, so that can get really competitive. But uh, unfortunately, uh, but fortunately uh, for those of you who are into kinesiology and education, and if you have a really high average, you can actually apply to early admission, which is the deadline is December 1st. So you still have a, about a week so to apply. Um, if you apply for early admission and you have an average above, uh, for education will be above 85, and then for kinesiology will be above 90, you'll get a guaranteed uh, admission to those two colleges instead of waiting for that competitive ranking system. So, and then for the third thing, how do you find out what classes I need uh, for the program uh, I wanna go into? I will show you a quick tool. Uh, it's our online tool uh, about how to, how to find out that requirement. Uh, one second. Okay, so all you need to do is go to our admissions.usas.ca website. 
And then once you get to the website, go to admission and under there, go under requirements and deadlines and it will give you this page. The online tool I'll talk about is this little box here. So um, you just need to tell us about your education background. So let's say if you're a high school student or a graduate, and then where did you attend high school? Uh, so if you're an international applicant, you'll see you'll find that we have different uh, countries listed here. And then it's also different programs, for example, the IB program. And then if you're taking the British curriculum, we have also have the GCSE uh, program here. And then if you couldn't find your program or your country listed name listed here, you just click on all other countries uh, and then view requirements. You'll see the requirements automatically populate for all, all of our six direct country colleges. And you can just click on uh, every single one of them or the ones that you're interested in to be able to see what classes are required. So for example, we click on agriculture and bioresources here. Uh, you'll see that what are the intakes we do uh, throughout the year, what are your application deadlines. And the required classes are actually listed as the first requirements here. So you, we would like you to have your biology, chemistry, and math in your grade 12 classes. Yeah, so that's just a quick demonstration of how to use that tool. Um, I will get back to, sorry, <laughs> uh, our presentation. Okay, yeah, so if you have more questions about how to use that tool, we are at our booth and we, we're happy to help you, guide you through one more time uh, or many more times to, until you're confident to use that online tool and fi figure out the requirements on your own. So, and then uh, for English language proficiency, as I mentioned, you can definitely apply to our USASC Language Center for that EAP program, English for Academic Purpose program, uh, which will, it, completion of that program will qualify you as a uh, for English language proficiency. Um, not only that program, but also um, because we offer that program at our language center, which we also offer what we call a joint admission. Uh, so let's say you met all the academic requirements, but you're just lacking that English proficiency requirements. When you submit your application, you can actually submit a joint application to both the English for Academic Purpose program at our language center and one of the degree programs uh, from one of the six direct entry colleges. But that's when you are already qualified for your um, uh, 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 academic program uh, academically. So which means you meet all the requirements, uh, uh, admission average minimum, and then your required classes are filled. You're just lacking that English proficiency requirements Then apply for joint admission. And then not, not, let's talk, talk about money. So uh, this table shows you roughly how much international student needs to pay uh, on uh, throughout one year um, as an estimate. Uh, this is based on if you take the full course load, which uh, for example, if you're going to arts and science, that, that will be five classes per term. And then for engineering, that will be six classes per term. That's why engineering is costing a little bit more. Uh, but nevertheless, all students pay student fees the same. Uh, and then the student fees is from, uh, covers two terms. So it actually goes from September all the way to end of April. And um, it covers a lot more than just your regular student services. Uh, so it also covers your unlimited use to our on-campus gym. And then it covers your extended health and dental benefits. So you can feel free to go see a dentist every year uh, or go for see a massage therapist every year. Uh, it also covers your bus passes for those of you who do not have a vehicle and then uh, do not know how to get around the city. Uh, your student fees covers your unlimited bus passes. But uh, we also offer lots of scholarship at our undergrad level for all the students coming to USASC. Uh, first type, we have the guarantee entrance scholarships. These Sorry. are scholarships yeah. you do not need to apply. Can you interrupt for one minute? Can you just share oh. your screen, please? Oh, uh, it went off again. It did, yeah. Oh, sorry. That's so strange. Uh, okay. I hope it won't happen. Okay, now everybody can see? Perfect. Um, yes. 
Yeah, so first we have the guaranteed entrance scholarships. Uh, these are scholarships you do not need to apply. You will be considered automatically when you apply for admission. So when you submit your application to USAS for a degree program, you'll automatically be considered for those scholarship uh, entrance, guarantee entrance scholarship. Uh, and the re, uh, the criteria we use is your admission average. So depends on how high your average is, uh, you will get different levels of money. Um, next, we have our best and brightest scholarship. This is our highest uh, value renewable scholarship. Uh, so the total value can go up to 40,000, which covers a heavy chunk of your tuition already. Um, these scholarships you do not, you do need to apply. Uh, you won't be automatically considered if you don't apply. Uh, so in order for you to apply for that, you need to apply for admission first. So apply to USAS for a degree program by December 1st. Then you'll get a login credential to our student portal, pause, where you can submit your application for scholarship by December 15th. If you miss, unfortunately miss that deadline, we still have our, a variety of competitive entrance scholarship. These scholarships can vary, uh, can go up to 32,000. Um, and then it has a variety of uh, different requirements. Uh, so you will have to do some research on your own. You can go to our scholarship page and use the search our words button uh, to search by keywords or search by colleges, um, search by type. There's different settings that you can play with uh, to really explore the full list of scholarships we offer at USAS. But in order for you to apply for those competitive entrance scholarships, you will need to apply for admission by February 15th. So apply to your degree program by fe February 15th. Then same thing, go to your student portal, uh, pause and submit your awards application by March 1st. If you're considering living uh, in residence in Canada, uh, we do offer some great residence choices uh, in at our campus and outside of a campus. Uh, so there are two types for on-campus residents. Uh, it is called Voyager Place. So it is a dormitory style um, room. So which means um, you can either have a single bedroom or shared two bedroom, uh, but there's no kitchen and no shared bath, uh, no bathroom, private bathrooms. So you will be sharing bathroom with other people in the hall. Um, but the great thing of living on campus is that uh, you're residence buildings connected with all, all of our other academic and student services buildings through our tunnels and walkway system, uh, which means when the weather is horrible outside, you do not need to go outside to go to your classes. You can, you know, wear your pajamas if you want to your classes. Um, and another thing is since there is no kitchen in your um, room, uh, all your meals are covered under a meal plan, which allows you to eat unlimited buffet style meals at our on-campus Marcus Culinary Center, which is a great benefit, uh, especially during exam time when nobody got time to cook for themselves. Um, and then if you feel like you want more independency, uh, we do have our off-campus residence option, uh, which is called College Quarter. Um, even though being off-campus, it is only about five minutes walk, five to 10 minutes walk to our main campus. Uh, so not that far. Um, it does offer your, because it is apartment style, so you will have your own kitchen and your private bathroom. All your utilities are covered in your rent. Uh, if you feel like you don't want to cook for yourself, you can also purchase the meal plan to enjoy the same unlimited meals that students live on campus will, in, will have access to. Um, yeah, so two choices. But those are uh, both choices are recommended for undergraduate students. If you're a graduate student, we have other options. So please talk to us in our uh, USAS booth if you're interested in grad studies and grad housing uh, issues. Um, besides residence, there's also tons of student services and support we offer on our campus. Um, I'm not gonna go one by one because uh, you can you guys can probably read on your own. Um, one thing I want to point out is our International Student Study Abroad Center. So if you're an international student, definitely uh, use their services because they have lots of uh, registered immigration consultants who can help you with all your immigration questions. So things like, oh, how do I renew my visa? What, uh, what happened to my study permit? How do I get a post? Uh, can I work off campus? Can I work on campus? Uh, so all the, those kind of questions, you can definitely talk to our uh, registered 
immigration consultant at our international student uh, study abroad center. And then another service I want to mention is our courier services, uh, which I highly recommend all of our students to utilize uh, because they offer a lot of support for especially for those of you who are internationals who are new to the Canadian job market. Uh, they help you from scratch, uh, how to build your resume, how to search for job posting, how to prepare for an interview. Uh, so really train you to get you prepared for the Canadian job market. Um, last but not least, there's the Student Wellness Center on campus. Uh, it is our on campus, basically like a clinic, uh, which gives uh, all of our students easy access to see a doctor uh, to see med to uh, see medical attention. Um, this is also the place where you can use your student fee uh, covered extended health benefits to see a massage therapist or a physical therapist. Uh, and then they, they also have counseling services as well. Um, besides that, we also, of course, we have tons of sports uh, team and uh, student clubs. Uh, for you to explore your interest and then to meet people who share the same interest with you. Uh, and then the great thing about our student clubs and society is that uh, among the 100 plus options, uh, if, let's say if you don't find anything that interests you, you can, you're encouraged to start your own club and, or society. Uh, our USSU um, undergrad student union will actually help you to start your own student club and societies. So with all the great things about USASC, are you ready to apply? To apply to us is very easy. You just, all of our applications is, on, is down uh, online. Uh, so you just need to go to this website, apply.usask.ca, create an account and start your online application right there. Uh, we do charge for, if you are applying to one of our undergrad programs, we do charge our 90, do 90 Canadian dollar um, application fee and it unfortunately it's uh, there's no waiver for that and then it's non-refundable uh, if you're applying to our um, grad program the the application fee goes up to 120 Canadian dollars um, if you missed out any of the information we talked about today uh, feel free to sign up for our upcoming online events these are all free for you to sign up so things like our uh, use ask admission and programs um, did my screen go off good? Oh, okay, I guess not. Okay, so yeah. And then there's also uh, application workshops where we walk you step-by-step -step on how to fill up well, that online application. Um, but if you have specific questions that you want a, a private uh, personal chat, you can definitely use the chat with use ask function, which allows you to book a 20 minutes one-on-one -on -one chat uh, with one of our use ask representative to talk about our undergrad programs to talk about student life, campus life, uh, anything, any question you might have about uh, undergrad studies at USASC. Uh, so at the end, I just wanna remind you a couple of the important dates. So first of all, December 1st, as I said, it is the deadline if you want to apply to get the highest scholarship we offer, the best and brightest scholarship. Uh, if you want to, be able to apply for that, you definitely need to apply to USAS for your degree program by December 1st. December 1st is also the deadline to apply for early admission if you want to go into kinesiology and uh, education. For kinesiology, you will have to have an uh, admission average of above 90, and then for education, you'll have an average above 85. But this uh, saves you the trouble from going into that competitive ranking system. So definitely worth a try. And then February 15th uh, is the deadline for all of you who want to apply for our uh, competitive entrance awards. Um, make sure to submit your application to the degree program by February 15th, then submit your awards application by March 1st. February 15th is also the deadline for application to our College of Kinesiology and our College of Education for their regular competitive ranking admission. Um, these do have a slightly lower admission average than the early admission, but um, consider that you will be competing with all the other applicants. So um, we might have a guide in uh, a, a minimum average list on our website, but um, normally student get admitted have an average way higher than that. So um, do keep that in mind. 
And May 1st is uh, the deadline to apply to most of our other colleges, for example, Agricultural and Bioresources, our Edwards School of Business, our College of Engineering. Um, if you're to those colleges, make sure you apply before May 1st. Okay, so that'll be towards the end of our uh, presentation. I have our contact information listed here on the screen. Uh, on the left, you'll find our admission and transfer credit team uh, contact. You can either phone us or send us an email. Um, if you're interested in that language program I talked about of our of, of the offers through our language center, uh, feel free to contact contact our language center as well. And we also have an Instagram page. You can find the QR code on the bottom right. Uh, you can definitely scan that and follow us on Instagram. And then last but not least, the most important part is our admissions.usas.ca website where you can find all the information I talked about today. Okay, so I will stop sharing my screen and then to see if anybody has any questions. So we have reached the end of the time for the session. Mm -hmm. um, any other students have any other questions? Is there a place that's best for them to contact you guys? Yes, for sure. Um, I guess we, Cranian and I will be here until the end of this fair. So definitely feel free to come to our booth and chat with us. Uh, we also have our contact information listed in our booth. So you can take that down and then send us an email after as well. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, guys, for hosting mm -hmm. today. Um, again, everyone, if you have any more questions, please reach out to them in their exhibitor booth on CCUF. If not, all right, have a great day, everyone. See you at the booth. <laughs>